Hey, what's up guys? Uh, Chip here. Today I'll talk a little bit about this uh, crate, Master Zeon, who many of you know. He and I uh, work together quite a bit on different things. And he did this wonderful actual uh, model of this crate and he used uh, very advanced quad topology surfacing techniques. And it's very impressive. And as I always say, is there's not a better modeler in the world than Jerry. Uh, he's just absolutely fantastic. I was talking with him a little bit and he said, I wonder if you could create this using your modifier, you know, Nitrox 3D methodology, you know, using design magic or whatever. And so I said, yeah, I thought I was going to play around with it. And I was able to come up with something close. It's not near as good or refined as Jerry's, but it's something that certainly will work, especially if the crates are not you know, hero models, and they're just part of a scene. With that, I just want to go ahead and show you how I would approach this process using a non-destructive modifier workflow. So let's get started. Okay, let's uh, start off with a plane, and I'm not going to model this to scale uh, because I will adjust it at the end. And I'm going to use this as cutter, but let's just go into our solid view like this, and let's tab into this and say, a and we'll say extrude and we'll go up and let's go up two so now we have a perfect cube and i'm going to x oops and i'm going to x the uh, faces of this and let's call this our tube and let's duplicate it shift d shift d right click and uh let's just hide this one this is just our so we'll start off with this we're going to want to keep this face so the rest of these we don't want. So I'll select this, control I, X faces, and this is it. And I'm gonna rotate this around the top. So I'll go, we'll do one side. And then if we edit this side, all the other sides will change. So control R and let's add, let's do about six cuts. And then I'll do control R and I'll roll this up till six also. And now we have basically our grid. In face mode, we're gonna grab these this one all the way down to here this is going to be these uh click control shift click these five by four grid is going to be our interior kind of our diamond pattern so i'm going to say p and i like that selection and let's name that one uh, diamond cut out something like that and we can basically hide that so i'm going to go ahead and add this uh variable side uh kind of a cutout of this. Let's go in my wireframe so I can see this. So I've got this selected. I'm gonna add this insert right here. So something like this and stretch it out a little bit like this. Now I notice it's not gonna work. So I'll say control A and let's just basically apply the scale on that and that'll give us our perfect uh, radius cut. So we'll start there. So that gives us a cutout. Let's go ahead and add a wireframe modifier to this. So we'll go over here and we'll say add modifier and i'm going to say a wireframe if we look at this it's uh different on the top and bottom so we really want to click this boundary button so we get it all the same now we do have this weird shape as we look in as we look at this it's this kind of an angled shape and the way we're going to fix that is we're just going to add a, a bevel first off let's see is this, is this about the thickness that we want let's do it 0.04 yeah, maybe maybe that'll that'll look a little better for now. Let's try that. And now I want to add a bevel on top of that. Add modifier, and we'll do a bevel. And so that bevel is going to basically do a nice job of flattening us out. Keep in mind, this is still very non-destructive. So I can shrink this down, Control A, and scale. And we could adjust this later on, which we will do. Okay, now we're going to want to array this. We want to basically build the other four sides. The way we're going to do that is let's do shift a and we're going to put an empty in here i'm going to use a uh, cube and we can go over here in our empty and say make it 0.5 we'll make it small and that empty i'm going to call empty and this is wall so we'll call it a wall and we'll call this wall so now we know that that empty goes with that wall so what i'll do is i'll add an array modifier we want four of these and we want the object offset to be this wall and then we want to select this and we'll go under our item and we're going to do the rotation about the z and we'll say 90. so once we've done that we got it. now the only issue here is that i really want this thicker okay so there i want to scale it by two in the y direction so i'm going to go in here and say scale 
and I'll hit the number two. So when I do that, you can see everything gets kind of cattywampus. And if I take her object and I adjust the Y location to minus one, now we're starting to get something that actually starts to look a little better. And now let's take our empty and we're gonna scale it on the Y to two as well. And we'll move the location on the X to one. So we moved the location over and scaled it, and now everything works correctly. So the way I figured this out is I just kind of played with these numbers, so I got them to work. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and let's leave our cube alone for now, and let's turn on our diamond cutout. So the first thing I want to do with this, I'm going to add a subdivision modifier. So we'll go subdivision surface, and I'll make it simple, and I'll make it one. And I'm going to turn off optimal display so you can see what we what we were looking at there. And now I'm going to add a decimate. And the decimate, I'll turn on up, uh, unsubdivide and hit one. And that's going to give us our little angles there. And then I'm going to add a wireframe. And you can see that works good. I need to put the boundary up here. And then I'm going to add a bevel on top of that. The wireframe is 0 0.04 like the previous one. And then we're gonna scale that in the Y dimension as two, like we did, and then we set the location to minus one. And collapse these, and let's add a final modifier, which is our array modifier. And we'll use the empty from the wall. And now we've got a pretty good start. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add the corners. And so what I'm gonna do is I'll turn this on here, and I'll select this cube one, and I'm gonna shift D, and right click and then I'm going to go ahead and turn it back off and this one I'm going to call corners and I want to tab into this I'm going to add a loop cut and I'm going to drag it all the way over to the edge and then I'm going to move it and I'm going to move it minus 0.2 minus 0.2 something like that and then I'll go over here and I'll have a loop cut cut here and move it to the edge click and then move it this direction and it'll be minus 0.2 now I'm just going to select this face, this face, this face, control I to select the difference, uh, the invert, and then X delete the faces. So we just have this part right here. Let's add a bevel modifier to this. Let's tab out of it. And as you may remember, I always say either use one segment or a minimum of eight. So I'll use eight at this point. And see, that's what we got. And now I'm going to tab back in and take a look at this and see where we're at. I'm going to add a solidify modifier. I'll just adjust this outward. So it basically just gets a little bit out of this. Let's just kind of go something like this. And our amount of our bevel, maybe we can just adjust that a little bit down as well. Something like that. Now you notice that we're these are poking through. So I'm going to go in here, tab into here, uh, turn on x-ray mode and go into edge mode and I'll select these and these and all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off x-ray mode now is I am going to slide these in just a little bit so that they aren't going to interfere as you can see this is where they're they're coming in now they're not going to interfere and then I'll tab out of this and down here I'm looking at this and going, actually, I want this to be flatter. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to tab into this and let's go and turn this off here. And I'll hey, say to select this and I'm going to go to edge data and I'm going to give that a mean bevel weight of one. And then over here in the bevel, I'm going to say edges and I want limit method weight. Tab back out and you notice that now we have this sharp here. And there so we we'll go back in here and now this sits properly for us okay so now with this done I'm gonna just shade smooth and make sure I auto smooth that in fact I'll do that for this too. shade smooth auto smooth that and with this done now I'm gonna to want to replicate this but I need a different empty because remember we adjusted this one so this is gonna be an easy one shift a I'm gonna do an empty and this one I'll do a um, sphere and we'll go into the empty and we'll make it 0.5 and this empty is going to be called the corners, E corners. So, and I'll select this object right here and we'll go in 
and we're going to toggle the stack and we're going to add another modifier which is going to be an array modifier like we did before and we want four of these and we want object offset to be this E corners and then let's go ahead and select E corners and let's rotate it about the Z axis 90 and now we have that okay so the next thing to do is we're going to go ahead and put the solid parts of this in play so that's this over here so I'm going to basically turn this back on and I'm going to call this the uh, solid okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the corners now and I'm going to select this new solid piece right here oops I'm sorry this this new solid piece and control click get the corners and I'm going to go in here in the local mode and I'll tab it so I can see everything and then I'll hit a and now really what I want to do is I want to see where my corner is and this is this is the corner that we're working on over here which is good so okay so now if I tab into this and alt Z I can see that this is this is the quadrants I want so before I do anything else let's just take this and uh, let's tab into it and control R and we're gonna add our same six ones over here six and control R and then of course I'm gonna to want to come over here and say control A and give us six here as well and now that we've got that done let's select everything Turn off x-ray mode and let's do uh, mesh symmetrize and that's minus and then we hit a to select everything and say mesh symmetrize again and this time we'll do y's the y's and now i'm going to go ahead and just select the parts that i want to keep so i'll go three uh for face mode just like those and shift and control shift and shift and control shift so i've got all those control i which selects everything else x to delete all the faces and now we're in pretty good shape let's go back into our object and this now is going to have we can do this with a mirror modifier you know x and y and basically say we merge so now we have this object and now it's really pretty easy for us to cut out the holes that we want and so i'm going to go tab into here and so what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these faces here X faces so that gets rid of that that opening and then I also want to get rid of these faces here but you can see that I just want to cut through that hole so what I'll do is I'll just basically select our cutter here I'm going to move this out just a little bit we can see a little better and then select this and uh, use bull tools, which is control numpad minus to cut a hole out. And so now you can see we've cut the hole out of that. But you can also see that we've got some other uh, issues there. So what we're going to need to do is let's go back into this object, into the modifiers, and let's add a solidify in here. And that solidifier needs to go above that Boolean. Right, so now we, we're, we're cutting in the right way. So as I look at the solidifier, I may say, well, I might want that solidifier to be on a little bit more on the inside. So let's just move it just a little bit like that. And I can make sure I have even thickness set up. Let's look at the actual width of this. See, that's our width. And that looks pretty good. Let's go point, 0.01, maybe, maybe something like that. And I can use this offset in, I can actually go a little larger, minus two. So it'll actually bring it in a little bit farther. So if I want to, now you can see, yeah. So that looks good. So now I have these, these are extended as much as possible on the outside. So that looks pretty good. And now you're looking at this cutter right here and you'll see that that is not working with the rest of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll select that object. And with that object selected, you'll see that I've got uh, a couple modifiers I'm not using. So I'm gonna turn this one off, this one off, and this one off. And I'm gonna just add a modifier that says array. And I'll array that uh, four times, whoops, four times. 
and we will you know basically use the same object offset which is the e corners and the reason why that's not working is because when we put this insert in it has a different origin which is right there so i can fix that by just saying control a all transforms and now this is all working exactly as we would expect it to let's go back into here and let's go a and you'll notice that we don't have this cut out and that's because we just didn't get all of these x faces so get rid of those tab and now we're do looking like we're in pretty darn good shape uh, for this model so the last thing I want to do is I'm going to uh, show you that, you know, let's go ahead and turn this off and take a look at what we have. Let's go ahead and just edit a few more things on this model. OK, so we can just see how easy it is to change things on this model. What I can do is, for instance, I can come in here to this part tab, hit the A button. Let's go over here to where it is. Let's say uh, let's basically take all of these and let's divide them, say, two. And we'll take this and that and control R and we're going to divide these by two also and tab out of that. And you can see now we're having a little bit of an issue with this. And this is why it's really nice to have this being non-destructive. OK, so let's take a look at this. One of the issues that we have here is that this bevel is no longer uh, respecting it being respected here as you look at this object right here you'll see that we have that bevel if I turn that off you get the same kind of thing going on and we want that to be respected so there's a couple things I can do one is I can try and before I add the bevel I can add a modifier called a weld and we'll put that right before the bevel and that might help but in this case, it really doesn't do anything. So I'm going to delete that out. The other thing that I can do is I can go back and I can remember that this looked pretty good before I added that one, these last lines in here. So let's just tab into here. I'm going to take this one and this one, and I'm going to say X and only edges. Oops. Take one. Uh, actually, I can uh, let's just take the let's take these faces and control X them. And we'll go over here and take these and control X them. Actually, yeah, control X those. So, so now we have uh, something that I think if we hit the tab button, we'll see that this works quite a bit better. You can see now all of our objects are looking correct uh, in terms of our bevel as being recognized. Now, if I want to adjust this, I can just come in here, tab into this. And remember that we changed the origin, so it's not easy to, to, to adjust it outside. So I'm going to just come in here and just kind of just you know drop it down a little bit like that so there, there so now we have an object that looks like this and you know that actually looks pretty good the last thing i'm gonna do is let's go ahead and just add a couple other lines first i'm gonna actually just go into here tab and find out where that is okay so i'll take this line and i'm gonna move it over and i just all i gotta do is just click on this little red and just drag it and i want to make sure i get it the exact same amount so it's 0.05 so i'm gonna say 0 0.05 there and then I'll go over here grab this line and move it here and I'll say 0 0.05 so now we know that we're getting it exactly the right amount and the reason why I did that is because I want to go here and say tab tab into this and I'm going to add one more line right into here all the way over click and then I'll move it again I'm going to just say oh uh, something like maybe there that's 0 0.06 0 0.06 and we'll come over here and do the same thing and over here negative 0.06 so you get the idea and tab out actually I might move that over so I can just say alt and alt and we'll just drag them this way so let's move it like that something like that and tab back out and that looks a little better now you notice we're having a little bit of some smoothing problems so I'm just go in here and make sure that my normals are set so maybe 20 is a little better. That's working better. Yeah. Okay. And then lastly, let's come down here on this object and say tab control R and we'll just split this one down. Just move it down just a little bit and tab back out. And there is our object. And as you can see, that was pretty simple, pretty easy to do, pretty easy to create a crate. There it is. So uh, if I want to add a little bevel across everything, you know, there's a couple different ways of doing it. Here you can see I've got a bevel shader at 0.02, 16 samples. So when I zoom all the way in, you'll see I'm getting a nice little bevel across there. I can make that 0.04, maybe a little bigger. Oops, 0.004, I'm sorry. A little bigger, get an idea, you know. So, and if I want to make it, you know, a little shinier, just pull this off. 
something like that. So anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this uh, you learned something perhaps about some new modifier workflows, and uh, I enjoyed making it. And it's a just another way to approach a modeling problem. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you online.